We're the Cole guys. I'm George. And I'm David. We're filming another episode here at Dick Dyer Mercedes. We're joined with our great friend Chip Huggins. He's been to the South Carolina House of Representatives now and is finishing up his final term. He's been there for 23 years. The Cole guys isn't your average real estate podcast. Our mission is to give buyers and sellers the power of knowledge through their real estate transactions. We do this by helping first time home buyers realize that there are more expenses that come with owning a home than just the loan. We also understand there are many times move up buyers and sellers have forgotten the process because it's been so long since their last real estate transaction. We make the downsizing easy. Once you get into the habit of working with us, the process becomes so smooth you won't mind to move. We are also excited to share with you what all the Midlands has to offer. To offer. This episode is brought to you by Dick Dyer Mercedes Benz, the first Mercedes Benz in South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, and so Chip, I tell you, the, the Irmo area has just been so blessed for your leadership over the years. There's, I don't think anywhere we go that A, nobody knows, you know, nobody doesn't know who you are, but B, I think you are the one politician that I've never seriously heard one negative thing about. And, uh, you know, that, that just goes to, to who you are and, and, and your, your lovely wife, Ginger, that we know so well. So we're excited to have a conversation with you today to learn more about you. Well, I can't thank you enough for letting me be here with you. We certainly appreciate the Cola guys, and uh, I can't tell you how thankful we've been to know David and, and George and uh, what you certainly mean not only to our community but to the business community. Uh, keeping this economy moving is so important. Absolutely. And I, I will say that uh, Ginger is my much better half. <laughs> um, you, you actually got the good part in there, so we've been thankful to hang with her for uh, going on 40 years there so wow. we look forward to hopefully many more very yes. good thank you so if you'll just give us a little bit um, our viewers background about well we mentioned who you are but what you do for a living um, what you did and how you got into politics sure you know um, like you all I, I started in the real estate business I went in the real estate business right out of uh, school and uh, I say that out of college I finished at went to university I went to the University of South Carolina as well and um, we came right out and actually went to work with a company called Gordon Realty. Okay. Um, both of those have closed down now because um, the, 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 the father that started Gordon Realty, he passed away and the son, he actually um, just kind of uh, retired out of the business. But they both did very, very well. What an experience, um, similar to what you all have done. Um, I had an opportunity for someone that had been in the business a long time that trained me and certainly you know I say cutting the teeth uh, he he really cut my teeth because he was a major a retired major from the army okay and I needed the discipline at that time <laughs> in my life and it was a great thing for me so I went right into the real estate business and stayed very involved um, we were fortunate um, you know again we're very blessed in South Carolina where our market uh, keeps moving um, we hope it will always stay that way and I think the opportunity for real estate is very bright um, and I, I would encourage anyone to, you know, team up with you all uh, because I think it's an opportunity that's so special. And we worked real hard in that. I had my own company at one time. It was Huggins and Company Realtors. Then I partnered with the Settler Company, which y'all may have met Ron Bartholomew over the years. Me and Ron were partners for um, some time. And then I went um, when this uh, election occurred and we got into the state house um, I realized real quick um, it was kind of hard being a solo practitioner so I became the broker uh, in charge at uh, Century 21 at that time which evolved into Coldwell Banker and then I went into business development with them but I stayed very very active in both the local um, the National um, Association of Realtors. Yes, uh, the issues were very important to me and of course in, in 1987 I met my <laughs> wife Ginger and she just happened to be working for Governor Carol Campbell at the time. Um, yes. She had worked for him as a congressman, had uh, uh, come down to Columbia when he became the governor and he gave them the opportunity to basically take the positions that they would as long as it was in their purview and mm -hmm. she she ran the governor's match and that was her her role under the Campbell administration so got into the I guess the touching of politics with that we got to know the Campbell so well they were so awesome and um, from there um, Andre Bauer who had been our representative um, he had an opportunity to run for a special election for the Senate 
and got elected. And so when that happened, I blame it on Ginger. Um, <laughs> she taught me into to running, and there were there were four of us in the race. Um, okay. I, I will say this: I, I, I like you all. I, I don't really go after anything for losing. Yes. Sir. Um, but I really didn't think I would win. Um, I went at it uh, with every bit I had and everything we could could muster. Um, as I had some seasoned politicians in there who were now my my dear friends and. Um, we ended up uh, at the end of the, the, the election um, winning, and so we became the representative for District 85, and we um, were very fortunate to, to go through that. What an amazing process. Um, if I yeah. <laughs> knew then what I know now, <laughs> would I have done it? I really don't know. Yeah. Um, I'll say the time commitment just for me because I know how you all do your business. Yes, sir. I, I try to do that with everything we do. And uh, so it becomes a time commitment that uh, we, we've been fortunate to step through a lot of um, committees, um, work on a lot of issues with the committees. Um, I'm going to say this. Um, ironically, um, I'm very proud of this in the sense of just the way that things went. I think we had three of the hardest issues our state has ever faced when I came in in 1999. Um, that was dealing with the Confederate flag, it was dealing with the lottery, and then we had um, this thing called video poker. And those three issues were very hard for South Carolina and um, tough, a um, lot of work, a um, lot of learning lessons, and so we ended up working those out. Um, now as I'm segueing out, um, we look like, if everything is poised correctly, that we will uh, pass, hopefully on Tuesday, um, the ability to make one of the largest investments that's ever been made in South Carolina's history. And I'm just really excited that that's going to happen before November 14th, before my term expires. But we've got a great yeah. district, as y'all know, and um, we've just been fortunate and thankful for, for all the people we've had the opportunity to meet and serve. and. We're looking forward now. I'm, I'm at the university yeah. um, serving in a different way. And a good friend of mine reminded me the other day of all the folks it serves. And that excites me um, in that sense. And um, so we're looking forward to where that chapter takes us. That's awesome. So, so I came down to go to the University of South Carolina. And so many of my good friends from college days were from the Irmo area. And so you know, still good friends with them because a lot of them are still in the area. And so, yeah, I mean, you can't say enough a good thing, enough good things about the Irmo community, mm -hmm. just how it's growing, how it's developed over the years, and just the people that are there. And we know that through the Irmo, the Greater Irmo Chamber of Commerce, right? There are just a lot of wonderful people there that are very invested in the community. And they've invested a lot of time in you as well as their state representative you mentioned the time commitment so you know walk us through kind of what it's like to be a state representative what what does that job entail what are, what are your primary responsibilities and how do you go about carrying them out sure you know it, it it's, a, it's a process um, and the house uh, still goes by seniority and and certainly the the legislature does and you'll notice these license tags and the numbers and yeah. typically the lower the number means the longer the person is served so when you come in I, I can tell you it is a complete uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to Jay Kilmartin because hopefully we've tried to help him some to be prepared for some of this but it becomes very overwhelming because you start getting calls from people you you had no idea uh, would be calling you. you 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 have a lot of issues that go on our district's very active yes. so we have um, just using the city of Columbia for example most of our services are through the city of Columbia so we have a lot of city of Columbia um, issues and working through those are so important so you never know what time of day you're going to get an issue to come up. Uh, so you have your regular job that's your full-time job yes, because sir. the legislature is considered part-time. But And I don't mean this wrong, but this, that's a forest uh, because and I'm, I've been very blessed. Um, you know, I, like I said, I went through, uh, I've, I've been through every committee except judiciary. And um, currently still I serve right now, I'm the chairman of the Regulations and Administrative Procedures Committee. I'm on the Ways and Means Committee, I'm on the State House Committee, I'm on the Opioid Study Committee, and once you get onto those that are extremely active and very time consuming, 
your volume goes up tremendously. So typically, and I'm, I'm saying this, I heard your talk the other morning about when you're in the gym and where you get there. <laughs> um, I try to do that too yeah. in a different way. I run with my dog, uh, you know, every morning. But at the same token, when I generally get up, I, I do my devotional. Yes, sir. <laughs> then I'm right into my emails and it, whatever issues have come up the night before. Um, we have to work through that. Then I try to, I, 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 once you start something, you have to keep it going. Yeah. So I started this birthday thing. And so I do my birthdays. <laughs> and then I try to, you know, uh, whatever little bit of time we have, then I, you know, obviously try to clean up and get in the shower and get out the door and go where we're going. Typically, the day is a mix of lots of, lots of things with your regular job yes. um, and then lots of things and I'm just going to use Friday as an example um, you know we had a, a, a yard that got messed up in Hill Creek as a result of a water repair issue we had a deer that I think was on the um, Irmo Drive um, we had um, you know just multiple issues like that that go on through the day okay. that you know once you've been in there for a long time and it won't be, Jay will be hit with it off the bat. I mean, he'll have a lot right off the bat just because people are local. He's local. People expect you to be at yeah. events and things. So that takes your time. Yes. Um, Friday we were supposed to have, and it's going to be beautiful, by the way, when you get a chance, up on the Irmo side of the dam, it's going to look like the Hollywood sign that you see up on the hill. That's going to say Lake Murray. Okay. And I was very, that was very, not Miriam Atria and Lake Murray country, um, really the driving force behind that. But that's going to be beautiful for, for our community. And um, if you go by there, they've actually got some rendering. We were supposed to have that when, um, Friday morning, got postponed uh, a little bit. Um, but, you know, lunchtime was taken with the School of Pharmacy. Um, and we were very fortunate to get some education for me on that. Um, the afternoon I had several things I had to just clean up for the district that we were doing. And then I had my letters to sign that I try to do now on Fridays. So I had to run over to the block building and um, at least try to do at least a little bit of that. Fortunately, once becoming the Chairman of the Regulations Administrative Procedures, I have some staff. Yeah. And we've got some of the most awesome people. And I, I want to give a plug to Cammie Thordahl. Um, Trey Walpole, he is amazing. Uh, Cammie is absolutely amazing. Um, and then Matthew Barton, who is our law clerk. And then Campbell Sherbert. And between them, that really helps a lot yes. to be able to, you know, do some of that without having to go you know, physically there. Sure. But it's a lot of time. Um, but again, I, I'm, I'm eternally grateful. I mean, I wouldn't uh, change any of that just for the sake of any time you can help someone. And, and be of assistance to somebody when they're not knowing where to turn. That's part of it. And, you know, I don't always know where to turn, but we will try to figure that out. Very good. So you talked about legislator um, in the state of South Carolina being considered a part-time job. In other states, it is full-time. I know Pennsylvania, um, for instance, they're full-time. Has that ever been a topic of conversation uh, on whether or not it should, the legislative should go full-time? Uh, in the state of South Carolina, and why has it not happened yet, or what is your opinion on if it should or should it not? Yeah, you know, there's, uh, I guess, mixed emotions out there in the sense of the, the, the voting population. And one of the things that, that makes it tough um, is, you know, I don't know that really most folks know the time commitment. Um, a lot of folks don't know that it's part-time. And one of the hardest things that you have is to bring that before a voting body and vote for that because you can pretty much vote yourself out of office pretty quickly <laughs> by voting yourself a raise. Um, it's been attempted. It's been talked about. I would hope at some point we, we've got not just in the legislature. Um, our statewide offices right now are so antiquated in the the, and there's arguments out there. I, I, I say you don't, you don't do it for the money, but at the same time when it becomes where you can't even survive or make a living or feed your family, then it becomes very, very difficult to get really good people to serve. So that's the fine line with this. Um, in the end of the day, it pays around $30,000. Um, that's the 10-4 of the salary, then what you get per diems 
depending on how many times you come back during the session, um, how many times you come back during the year. So, you know, that gets up if you've got that on top of your other salary where you can do it. Um, it stretches you uh, very, very thin. So I would hope we could get to where either the SPA, which is the state physical authority, could, could, could study this and bring these proposals because the statewide offices, and I'm just using the attorney generals for, for instance, the attorney general's office, I believe that pays $92,000. The solicitors, and I love our solicitor, I love our attorney general, and, and but I, they, I think they make double what the, the attorney general makes, and the attorney general in our state is, is really the, their, their authority. Yes. So there's those disparities out there, and, and certainly the antiquation of some of this needs to be corrected. One of the toughest parts that we have you hear recurring and non-recurring dollars. Right now, fortunately, even given what we're going through, I think our economy is doing really, really well in South Carolina. I think our revenues have been up uh, tremendously. So if that continues, there'll be a lar larger opportunity to do fairly much what we did this year, which we funded more than we funded in a long time. Now, recurring is going to be the real issue because if it's not recurring, it's hard to do salaries and, and say, we'll pay you next year the same if it's still, you know. <laughs> so so that, that's going to be the challenge. But I would hope we could get an independent group mm -hmm. um, that could study that and, and look at this. Ironically, I had an issue Friday with the DMV that came from one of the Pennsylvania representatives. <laughs> and, and we worked on it beautifully. He was extremely pleased. Our DMV did a great job. So it's kind of funny you bring that up, but we're very familiar with it. And we are, we are looking at that. That is being studied. I don't know when the goal line will kind of get passed, but I hope that someday maybe it will so that the quality and people will stay where it's needed to be in our state. Yes, awesome. Tim back next week when we release part two of our episode with Chip Huggins.